Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lisa Natoli, and I am so happy to be here. This is TGF TV. We are on every Friday morning at 1030 a.m. Eastern, and I am the host every first Friday of the month, and my topic is always on true healing, and I almost always have a guest. And this month I decided I was going to be my own guest. <laughs> so I'm both the host and the guest. And the topic this morning is on continuing symptoms. So this show really is for anyone who really has body symptoms still going on and you're concerned about them. So many people have continuing symptoms and they're not an issue. So that's really not what I'm talking about. But if you have body symptoms and you're trying to heal them, you're trying to get rid of them, you're worried about them, you think you're not healing correctly, you think you've done something wrong, you think you're not there yet, whatever the mind is doing around that, that's what today is about. So the way it works here on TGF TV is we made a decision that we would do the first 30 minutes free on Facebook. So we're in the Teachers of God Foundation Facebook page live. And I don't see any of you actually here, but I have my my co-pilot in the background, Teresa Atkinson. So she'll be posting um, in this chat board. I'm in the Zoom room, which is the Evolve membership. So I actually have Evolve members here in the room with me. And good morning to everyone. There's a chat board in here. And so it's 30 minutes live on Facebook. And then we move over into the Evolve member area where it's um, interactive. People can ask questions. There's a place for sharing. And that's from 11 until 11.30 a.m. Eastern. So I want to welcome you all here. This is just a topic that's near and dear to my own heart. I have been fascinating with the subject of healing almost to a point of obsessiveness, I don't know, 30 years. I, I think it's a fascinating subject. I've read practically every book one could possibly read on healing. I have, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what, what's up with that, but I've, I've gone back to books from the 1700s. I mean, I've read books, all of the books that were written in the 1800s, early 1900s, when there was just this huge wave of, of metaphysical teachings coming out. Um, and of course, Jesus in the Bible and, and A Course in Miracles. And so I'm not a religious person. I didn't grow up with religion. I found A Course in Miracles in 1992. I was 24. And I, I was like, okay, this healing idea, is this true? Because what it says in A Course in Miracles, it's very uncompromising. And it says there's no order of difficulty in healing. It, it talks about um, that healing is simple. And that was never my experience. Like in the world, healing is very complicated and it doesn't happen from like by a formula, you know, and what A Course in Miracles does is pretty much gives us the steps. And so I want to talk about that today. And I'm going to focus on just to start out with, uh, there's some sections in the, the manual for teachers. There's three sections, starting with how is healing accomplished? And then the second section is, is healing certain? And the answer to that question is yes, always. And should healing work be repeated? And the answer to that question is no, it should not be repeated because it, was, it worked the first time. So, like I said, this is a topic near and dear to my heart because I actually was fascinated by healing, reading all these healing books, like going, I want to know how it works. And then I got sick. So, you know, at first I, I didn't really put two and two together, like the gift of that, that I, I had this incurable autoimmune condition that had very severe physical symptoms. And, 
and I tried everything to heal them physically. And I tried everything to heal them metaphysically and nothing was working. And, and I spent a lot of money. First of all, I spent a lot of time. Um, I, I changed my diet. I tried raw food. I tried clean eating. I tried celery juice. I tried everything. I mean, I was ingesting essential oils. I was doing really dumb things. Like when I look back now, I, I, I can see like I was focused on the body and, and trying to heal the body. And I, I had an experience where I, I thought I was able to minimize the symptoms. And I feel like this is what a lot of people are experiencing right now, especially with autoimmune conditions, is you you kind of have an experience that if you eat gluten-free and if you don't eat dairy and if you really eat really, really strict, you can minimize the symptoms. And my experience is that I was walking on eggshells all the time because I didn't know if somebody was going to put gluten in something and I didn't know about it. So that's not living. I wasn't living. And and that the pain just was always there. You know, it's just like, what am I doing wrong? Like, I want healing so much. I just want to be the light in this world. I just want to, you know, be free. And that's that's the, the sickness is those thoughts. So what we don't see when we're focused on body healing is what really needs healing, which is those thoughts that are in the mind. I'm weak, I'm frail, I'm limited. Like for anyone who, who is experiencing body pain, body symptoms, you can feel the frailty, right? You feel, you've, inside you feel free and you feel like the body's a prison house. Like it's, it's you, you know that you are eternal and changeless and whole. You can, inside, there's no sickness, but then you're having this body experience and it, like the, just the body's failing you at, at every turn, right? It's faults, it's frailties, it's weakness. And that's what's sick. That's what needs healing. The body is in no need of healing. Only the mind needs healing. So the mind that is believing it's a body is what needs healing. And my healing came to my awareness with my husband, Bill Free. And I've told the story many times, but in the, the height of the worst symptoms, um, for years, I couldn't talk. Like I just had the most unbelievable dry mouth and dry eyes and people would see me and they're like, oh, oh, they would, they would sort of like be taken aback, mucus coming out of my eyes and, and people would kind of go like that when they saw me and they would go, are you okay? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm fine. Cause I felt fine. But I had all this like symptoms going on that were very visible and I couldn't talk more than two minutes without taking a sip of water. My mouth would just, <laughs> it goes so dry. And, and people would write to me. They would say, uh, is you okay? they give me all sorts of different, you know, remedies that I could try out. And I tried them all, you know, eye drops, you name it. I tried it. And, and so that, that, that went on for five years, probably. And in fall of 2018, my husband, Bill Free, who'd been following non-duality teachings, which I had a massive resistance to, I was like, get that teaching away from me. I was just pure Course of Miracles. I don't want to hear about any other teaching. And he was at a Rupert Spira retreat in the fall of 2018. He called me on the phone or I called him and I was in so much pain. I was like, oh my God, I can't stand it. I want to just help. And he said, Lisa, can you welcome it? 
that was a turning point for me. That was an absolute turning point because I hadn't welcomed anything up to that point. I had been attacking myself for being sick. I had been hiding. I hope nobody knew that I was experiencing pain. I, um, I, I was just, you know, living in isolation really in tremendous fear. I thought I was dying. And the one thing I never did was welcome it. Like welcome everything, welcome the pain, welcome everything, like let it all be welcome and love it. And that's what he asked me. Can you love it even if it never goes away? And it must have been my time because I it was like a like a light went off in my head. And it was like, oh my God, that's it. Like I'm not gonna try to heal anymore. I'm not, I'm not gonna try to heal this anymore. I'm not gonna walk on eggshells anymore. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna live limited. I'm not gonna be weak anymore. I'm not gonna be frail anymore. I was, it was just this total decision in that moment for life and aliveness and to be who I am, which is not the body, but to really say yes in this Easter weekend. So this is like a perfect time for anyone who's struggling to experience the resurrection this week for really just rising up out of that sense of weakness. So I want to just um, thank Bill Free for, for, for giving me that because I don't know, I hadn't, I hadn't, that hadn't occurred to me to welcome everything as it is. Because like, we don't see in the moment of pain that we're resisting and we're fighting and that we're, it's like we're futurizing. We're thinking, if I can just heal this, I'll do a detox, I'll go to another doctor, I'll try another thing. Um, that later, when this body is healed, then I'll start living. We don't see that. We, we just don't see it. We just, there's so much in the body identification that it's, that's where the focus is. So the reason I am my, my own guest this month is because the awareness conference is coming up. It's a conference. There's been two of them already. This one's coming up on April 16, 17, and 18. There's 40 amazing teachers of all different kinds of um, different kinds of teaching. There's um, Course in Miracles, non-duality, science, there's musicians. Um, there's going to be a, a, a lot of teachers talking about racism, which I'm super excited about for that conversation to come forth. And uh, just say, all the healing of whatever. And so my topic is the power of awareness to heal. So I really wanted to come on this month as my own guest because that's two weeks from now. It's totally free. If you wanna get all the bonuses, all the recordings, there's a charge for that. And so um, I, I see a link just got dropped into the, the board where you can sign up. And like I said, it's totally free for the whole weekend live and my topic is the power of awareness to heal. So awareness can be called by different names, consciousness, light, life, God, the Father, Christ. Um, it's our oneness. That's, that's what awareness is. And awareness has the power to heal. And when the awareness is on the body, you're in the wrong location. You're, you've wandered away from your center. This is the prodigal son story. And now you're in darkness. So the Course in Miracle workbook lessons right now that, that we're going through, if you're following in the calendar year, yesterday's was miracles are seen in light. And so you can't see the miracle when you're standing in the dark. So when you're focusing on body symptoms, you're literally in the darkness and you're wandering around in the darkness. I always use a circle and I have a bunch of illustrations I'll be using during the awareness conference. The center, which is all encompassing is light, wholeness, your eternal nature, 
you never were born, you never die. And we wander away from that into body identification. And now we, we are living off center and we think we're a body. There's a body belief and we just wander in darkness trying to find a solution. And the solution is to put your awareness back on the light. So the power of awareness to heal is where in that moment with me, when Bill said, can you welcome it? I took my awareness off the body. It was just this moment of like, I'm done. I am done. I am going to be happy. I am going to be the light. I'm focusing on the light. And what happens in that moment, it's like the pain didn't disappear straight away. And the symptoms didn't just like flash, flash away in that moment either. But what happened was I was connected again to joy. And then when things did arise, I was in the place of joy. I was in a place where I could see what was going on. I could see when I was falling back into the old patterns of weakness again. And I'm going to tell you, sickness has a lot of benefits. And, and so what it says here in A Course in Miracles is that healing involves an understanding of what the illusion of sickness is for. Healing is impossible without this. Sickness is an election. It is a decision for weakness in the mistaken conviction that it is strength. So, oh my God, right? Like... I chose this. Why? Why? Why would I do that? Why would I, why would I choose an incurable autoimmune condition where I can't talk and I got all this like physical stuff that's visible to everybody? Why would I do that? And and what it says is you want to be a body. You're afraid of the truth. You push it away and now you think you're you're really having this experience. And so so how is healing accomplished? Healing must occur in exact proportion in which the valueness of sickness is recognized. So remember, sickness is not of the body. Sickness is of the mind. Sickness is, of, is the thought. I can't. I'm sick. I'm weak. I'm frail. I'm limited. I'm angry. I'm confused. I have doubt. I'm, that's the sickness. You're not weak. That's what I realized. Like, I, I really thought I'm weak. I can't. I literally was like an old lady. And I'm like, oh, I can't. And it was like, when I woke up, I'm like, oh, huh, I'm not weak, but strong. That's what that lesson is. Miracles are seen in light. I'm not frail. I'm not powerless. I am the light of the world. So you connect again with your power. And, and so... It says all you have to do, healing occurs in exact proportion in which you see this and you say, I have no need of this. Healing is accomplished instantly. The instant you say, I'm not weak, I'm not frail, I could if I wanted to. Like so how much in sickness, like we, we use it, really, it has tons of benefits. Like the government gives some people money for it. You don't have to work. You don't have to go to school. People take care of you. You don't have to show up. You get to hide. You get to hang out. You get to rest. You get to relax. Um, nobody bothers you. It's got tons of benefits. So when you can see that and you say, I'm done with that. That that's that is ridiculous. Like that is so crazy. And and for me, I was just terrified of 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 being visible. And so I was like, oh, this is and I didn't see it during those years, but it was like, oh, I don't have to teach. I don't have to teach now if I don't want to. But I don't I don't have sickness anymore. I don't I don't need it. If I don't want to teach, I just say I don't want to teach. If I don't want to work, I just say I'd rather not to. If I don't want to go somewhere, I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't need to. If I want attention and love, I can ask for it. I don't need sickness anymore. I don't need it. It's, it does, has no value to me. And it started to disappear. It just started to go. The pain, just, it just started to go. I don't have those symptoms anymore. And so 
um, what it says here, one of the more difficult temptations to recognize is that to doubt a healing because of continuing symptoms is a mistake in the form of lack of trust. As such, it, it is an attack. So what it says in here, and I just want to give this to all of you while we're on Facebook Live because the time is going by like this, is I'm, I'm somebody who used to, as a child, I used to love those games, those memory games where you would fl flip those cards and you would you know, have to remember where the one picture was and the other picture and you keep flipping. And that's kind of how it is with me with The Course in Miracles now. I've, I've been so much with it for 30 years that I actually kept, can, am able to connect where things are, like where something got set over here and it relates over here. And that's why I put The Healing Cure. I have an eight-week online program where I picked out all the best parts on healing, I have the um, approval of the Circle of Atonement and the Foundation for Inner Peace to use the material, got their blessing on it. And this lesson on continuing symptoms is workbook lesson 139. I will accept the atonement for myself and that is the cure. That is the total healing. I'm just gonna give it to you straight. I want you to, I just, I, I never wanna hold anybody back. I'm not somebody who's like, oh, you gotta take this program and then you'll get the solution later. But what lesson 139 says, it's perfect that it's Easter weekend. I will accept the atonement for myself. It says the only thing we need to do as a teacher of God is to accept the atonement for ourselves. And both this section and on continuing symptoms and workbook lesson 139, I will accept the atonement for myself is all about doubt. That's what needs healing. So when you have continuing symptoms, you're in doubt. If, you, if you're concerned about them, you're rooted in body identity as a person, in isolation, in separation. That's why you experience doubt. But when you accept, I accept the truth of what I am. And that's, that's what it says in workbook lesson 139. I accept the truth of what I am and go rejoicing in the endless love of God. And I don't care if I have body symptoms. That's the healing. When you recognize, it's like the, that, that life just springs up again. It's like, oh, and my decision was... I'm going to be happy with whatever remaining time I have left. That's the end of that story. You know, I've, I've made a joke, but it's not really a joke. Um, the healing power of fuck it. Like when I was like in that state and I was really thinking I'm sick. When I, my eyes were opened, I was like, oh, fuck it. Like, I'm not going to, I am not living this way anymore. No way. And that's when the healing is accomplished and the symptoms didn't go away straight away. And I had a lot of doubt around it. It wasn't like it just all happened in that moment. But what did happen was that after that, I, I knew it was like, these are the little temptations to go back into body identification. This is what Jesus was referring to <clears throat> back in the desert, you know, with being tempted to stay in the world, to stay in littleness. And so it's, it says here in the manual for teachers, if you really want the problem solved, you cannot doubt. If you are certain what the problem is, you cannot doubt. Doubt is the result of conflicting wishes. Be sure of what you want and doubt becomes impossible. So just in our last few moments here on Facebook Live, what do you want? That, that question must be asked and it must be answered. What do you want? And for me, I wanted to know myself. I wanted to know my eternal nature. I didn't, I suddenly, it really, for me, it became so clear. I don't care about body healing anymore. Like you know, I want the hatred gone. I want the attack thoughts gone. I want, I want to be free again. I want to, I want to be in that freedom. I want joy. I want to be happy. I, I was so clear to me. And 
And the healing was accomplished right there. It was just like, yes, I absolutely can identify now with the truth of what I am. And it comes by many names, you know, complete identification with God, with Christ, with life, with love, with consciousness, with awareness, with the Father, I and the Father are one. So that was when Jesus, he, he demonstrated it for us. He, he recognized that's my healing. I and the Father, which is awareness, consciousness, life, love, I am love or one. I am what life is. I am what love is. Not Lisa, the body. I die. So when you hear me talk, I, life, am expressing. So this is the invitation to all of us on Easter weekend. How perfect, right? Is that we, we say, this is my time. It's always been here. The light's always been there. You've always been healed. There's nothing been stopping you at all, ever. And, and this is, this really is the place where it's uncompromising. And one of the things that's really just been happening to me, and I want to carry this conversation over into, um, into the evolve area in a moment is, um, <clears throat> I think a lot of spiritual people are waiting for some like thing to just happen where suddenly you're like full of vitality and health. But if you haven't been using the body and it's been, and you've been experiencing physical pain, or you have arthritis, you can't move the hands, you've not been using your legs, you've not been moving, you've just been wishing and hoping for a miracle or healing. You have to actually start right there. Like I really suggest you start moving the body, go outside and, and go for a walk. If you haven't been able to get out of bed, start wiggling your toes in bed. Start moving the body a little, like, you know, just, just move a little bit, you know, just stretch just like a kid like just begin to move the body and do it consistently because jesus said pick up your bed and walk but if you've been laying down sick then that's the pattern in your body it will take a minute it's not like you're just going to spring up and be like oh i'm totally fit and vibrant you got to let the life start moving through you like allow yourself to to, to really say, okay, what would I do if I was totally healed? You see, we don't, we don't think of that. The, the mind is so stuck on the body's symptoms. We think if I can just heal these symptoms, then I'll see what happens later. But the collapse of time is where you accept your healing now. You are strong. You are healed. You are whole. You are perfect. You the strength of God in you to do all things, nothing holding you back. So for me, in the beginning, I really couldn't talk. I mean, this my mouth with the 40 day program. Bill had to stop it every two minutes so I could take a sip of water. If it looks choppy to you, that's why I was like, I had the, these symptoms. I had to start to just be OK with like starting to talk. And drinking water when I was with people and I would tell people like, okay, I've, you know, been, had this thing and, you know, and it started to just clear up. It's as I started to allow life to move through me, I, I started to see, oh, I really am strong. I actually, I, I, I don't have those symptoms anymore. So, so I want to just, um, just let this be an invitation to you to accept your healing, accept the truth of who you really are, which is pure light, eternal, changeless, and whole. And I also do want to say before I move into the uh, evolve area in the Zoom call, I see tons of um, comments in here, is Jonathan Robinson is the presenter in the presenter series in April for the Teachers of God Foundation. It starts on Monday, April 5th. And uh, Teresa is going to post a link for that. He's amazing. Like he is, he is some, just an amazing teacher of non-duality. Um, so I wanted to just let you know about that before I, I switch on over. And I thank you for joining me on Facebook Live. And for those of you who want to join me over 
in Evolve. There's going to be a link if you're not an Evolve member to join. And I'll see you over there. I love you.